Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has vowed retaliation for Russia's invasion of his country and the suffering brought upon Ukrainian people as a result of the war. The criminals who came to destroy Ukraine and brought ruins to our home will definitely have ruins at their home, Zelensky said while addressing the nation on August 23, that marks the national flag day in the country. In this war, we are winning for Ukrainians the right to justice, to their freedom, their national dignity and security, and their right to have their own state," Zelensky stressed. Addressing the ceremony to celebrate the Flag Day, Zelensky called for national unity, for the sake of the blue-yellow flag, for the sake of Ukraine, stressing that good results can be achieved when Ukrainians are united in decisive moments. Glory to everyone who fights and works for Ukraine. Eternal gratitude to all the heroes of different times who fought for Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine, Zelensky concluded. Other senior officials were also attending the ceremony. It should be noted that Zelensky's remarks came amid Ukrainian army's advances in Russia's Kursk region where Kiev launched unprecedented cross-border incursion earlier this month. During the assaults in the Pokrovsk direction, Russian troops are suffering enormous losses, according to the Telegram channel of the Partisan Movement Atesh. An agent from Atesh in the 15th Motorized Rifle Brigade of the Russian Federation reported that the Russians have committed large forces to the assaults. The occupiers' desire to quickly capture Pokrovsk is turning into a major problem for them. The 15th Brigade is suffering significant losses. Personnel and equipment are being used on a large scale, but when the equipment fails, the soldiers lose coordination, leading to chaos and increased casualties. Meanwhile, mothers and wives of servicemen are writing letters to Russian President Vladimir Putin asking him to address the situation, but they are only advised to contact other authorities. But Pokrovsk's residents have a week or two to evacuate as Russian forces are closing in on the Donetsk Oblast city. The administration head, Sohi Dobryak, told Radio Free Europe, Pokrovsk is an important logistical hub for the Ukrainian forces that supports their operations in Donetsk Oblast. Around 53,000 people remain in the city. We had 13,700 children before the full-scale war in Pokrovsk. Now there are still 4,788 children in the community. That is, a third of them remain, Dobryak said. I think we will reach the point this week that we make the evacuation of children mandatory, he added. The obligatory evacuation of children and their families from the Pokrovsk community was announced later the same day by Governor Vadim Filashkin. An average of 500 to 600 people leave the city every day, and 60% of the residents leave using their own means of transport, according to Dobryak. As Russian forces concentrate more of their resources on the offensive in Donetsk Oblast, the situation in the area in the Pokrovsk direction remains extremely challenging, Kiev acknowledged. Russian forces have been slowly but consistently gaining ground in Donetsk Oblast, and the frontline areas of Pokrovsk and Toretsk have borne the brunt of attacks in recent weeks. The Ukrainian Defense Forces could carry out an operation in the territory of Transnistria, where the aggressor country Russia stores large stockpiles of ammunition and military equipment. However, this task is not a priority for the Ukrainian armed forces. This opinion was expressed in an interview with Oboz Revatel, media outlet by the former Deputy Chief of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Lieutenant General Igor Romanenko. It is important for us to achieve success there and put an end to this Russian cancerous tumor on the territory of Moldova on the border with Ukraine, he emphasized. According to the general, the Ukrainian Armed Forces Command needs to focus on the situation in the east of our country where the occupation army continues to advance. When this advance is stopped, if the necessary forces and resources are available, it will be possible to begin a military operation to create a buffer zone on the territory of Transnistria. Russia has few troops there, but powerful warehouses with ammunition and equipment. All of this was brought there from all over Eastern Europe when the Warsaw Pact was falling apart. And we have the corresponding forces in that direction, Romanenko explained. 
But I would like to emphasize that this could be an effective move if the appropriate resources were available. He concluded, the Ministry of Defense of the Transnistrian Moldovan Republic reported that after analyzing the experience of Russian forces in Ukraine, it was decided to outfit their tank fleet with systems designed to protect against drones. This decision reflects the growing threat of unmanned aerial vehicles in modern warfare. Transnistria's army currently possesses 17 Soviet-era T-64 tanks, 12 of which are operational, while the other five are in reserve. The tank battalion of the 1st Independent Guards Motorized Rifle Brigade is stationed in the village of Vladimirovka, just four kilometers from the Ukrainian border. During recent military exercises in the Republic, the Ministry of Defense showcased two tanks equipped with protective structures commonly known as grills. These structures are designed to shield the upper part of the tank turret from drone attacks. Given the limited number of tanks in Transnistria's arsenal, it is likely that this protection has been installed on all of them. In the Russian military, this type of protection has become standard on tanks due to the high prevalence of drones on the battlefield. Tanks now come equipped with these defenses directly from the factory, although many units also make additional modifications based on their combat experience.